Texas rigs, we all love them and if you're not using one, you should be. But when it comes to slapping a weight on your Texas rig, should you be using what's called a peg to keep your Texas rig weight in one place? That is exactly what we're gonna cover in today's video. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, how's it going folks and welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. And so if that's what you want, you belong here on the channel, hit that subscribe button. So let's go ahead and answer this question right away. Should you be pegging your soft plastic with a weight in, on a Texas rig? For the majority of cases, no, you shouldn't. I don't, and I still catch plenty of fish. <laughs> Got him, there we go. There's one. Goodness gracious, what a fish. But before we talk about why I choose to not peg my Texas rig weights in most cases, let's talk about what a peg is because some of y'all might be confused if you've never seen this before. A peg, as you can see from right there on my hand, is a little tiny piece of rubber or plastic that either slides onto your line before you rig the rest of your Texas rig or it'll stick into the top or the nose of your, of your worm weight. And it really accomplishes one main thing and that is to take two separate entities, your weight and your your Texas rig, whether it's a worm, creature bait, soft plastic, anything, and it makes them one cohesive package. So without a peg, your weight is free to slide along the line, and with a peg, they are one cohesive package. That's what a peg does. But Tyler, if you're telling me that I shouldn't be pegging my Texas rigs, why are you even telling me what a peg is if they're not that useful? Well, there is one specific use case for a peg. We're gonna get into that here in a second. But first I wanna cover why, for the most part, I leave my Texas rigs with a weight unpegged. So I'm not a fan of anything that keeps my hook from penetrating the inside of a fish's mouth. And believe it or not, a Texas rig weight, especially the bigger up in size you go, has a tendency to do that. So imagine this weight right here as a battering ram. A battering ram is used by either an army or an individual to force their way into a heavily fortified uh, castle, building, door, whatever it is, by using force to knock the door open or knock it down. And you might be thinking, how the heck does that apply to bass fishing? Well, when a fish clamps down on your entire Texas rig, the larger the weight size, the easier it will be for when you swing back the hook, that weight to basically like open up the mouths of that fish. I heard Shaw Grigsby talk about this years ago and I've seen it in my own fishing situations. It literally will force their mouth open and oftentimes move their mouth just enough to where that hook either doesn't penetrate very well and you lose a fish on the fight or you just totally swing and miss or you swing and it feels like you hooked them but the Texas rig just slips right out. I believe that is because the Texas rig weight is acting as a battering ram to blow open the mouths of those fish, especially if you have the weight pegged because if you have the weight pegged they have no choice but to eat the entire thing in their mouth now in comparison when your weight is free we're gonna take the uh, the bobber stopper away for a second and the fish bites that soft plastic Texas rig that weight slides down the line. I have seen it when filming underwater footage for years and years now, and then they have a light thing to suck even farther back in their mouth, thus allowing an even better hookup ratio. I'm telling you guys, having your Texas rig weight not pegged will lead to a whole lot better hookup ratio and more fish in the boat. Now, of course, a half ounce pegged weight is going to be a lot bigger of a battering ram than this tiny weight that I have right here, if you can even see that. That right there is a little, I think it's either 32nd or 16th ounce tungsten weight. I mean, this thing here is even skinnier than the, the head of my soft plastic rage craw here. So a tiny weight like this probably won't have that bad of an effect if you do decide to peg your weight, but I just don't see the need for it besides that one category we're gonna touch on here in a second. Now, I know that bass fishing is definitely an experience and thus confidence driven sport. So if you've always, uh, you know, pegged your Texas rig weights and you feel comfortable in doing that, you do you, that's all up to you. But I'm just telling you, in my experience, I hook more fish when it's not pegged. Now let's talk about when you should peg your Texas rig weights. And that specific situation is going to be when you're fishing a Texas rig around heavy cover. And the two most common types of heavy cover are going to be heavy matted aquatic vegetation, so a punching scenario, and then shallow bushes, shallow wood, that especially gets extra thick, extra bushy. That is where you want to put a peg on your Texas rig weight. Because your entire goal with fishing heavy cover with a Texas rig is to get your Texas rig farther down 
deep, farther in there than any of your buddies are because that's most likely where the bass are going to be living. Now, once you set the hook, trying to get those fish out, that's a whole other challenge in itself. But if you don't get your Texas frig to where they live, you're not even gonna get the bite. And so, so let's say my hand right here is a, is a mat of aquatic vegetation that's all stuck on the surface of the water and you wanna get underneath it. That soft plastic's gonna be flipped here. Oftentimes the weight will slip its way through but the soft plastic will not because it's not heavy enough to force its way through. So you're not even gonna get the bait in the area where the fish live. So that is where pegging your weight comes in handy because you flip this thing onto that aquatic vegetation, boom, it's gonna slip right through to where the fish live. That's the only scenario in which I use uh, a peg on my Texas rig weights. Now, how do you really decipher if it's heavy cover or just light cover? In most scenarios, you are not fishing heavy cover. You at home right now watching this video, you're probably not fishing heavy cover. You're fishing relatively light cover. A single tree standing there, a very thin, wiry, branched bush, scattered lily pads, scattered grass, none of that is heavy cover. Heavy cover is what you see here on the screen. Completely matted vegetation. Bushes that are now flooded, that have big, thick branches and tiny branches. That is what heavy cover is, and that's where you should be pegging your Texas rig. You should not be pegging your Texas rig for a lot of the fish catches you're going to see throughout this video video and at the end because that is just light cover and I want you to have a better hookup ratio. So if you're going to be fishing around heavy cover, let me show you how to rig a peg correctly. Really not that difficult, but I feel like it still needs to be talked about in this video. So a peg, these, these here are the six cents ones. There's tons of different brands. They basically all accomplish the same thing. I just like these because they're black and most of the weights that I throw are green pumpkin or black. So you're going to take your line right here and you're going to feed it usually into a loop. As you can see there on the screen, a wire loop that it provides. You'll stick your line all the way through and then grabbing the base of the peg area slide that peg up onto your weight Sometimes it may be difficult at the start because you are having to pull The peg over two pieces of line, but once you get it past that you'll see it kind of caused a little crimp in your line there. Make sure that when you're tying your knot, you do not include that in the knot tying process. Make sure you slide your peg down that line enough to give you plenty of room to tie your knot. Next, you're gonna take your bullet weight and you're going to slide it onto the line, poking through the nose, the skinnier end of the weight first. I, trust me, we've all done it before where we rig up our entire Texas rig only to realize the weight is backwards. So we got it on there correctly, just like that. And now it's time to use plenty of line here to get away from that crimp that was caused and tie our Texas rig hook on. Once you've tied it, cut off the tag end relatively close within a millimeter or two to the eye. Take your soft plastic, rig it just like a Texas rig should be. If you've never rigged a Texas rig before, I will leave a link down in the video description for you guys to check out. It's where I rig every single soft plastic on a Texas rig possible. And once you have the soft plastic on your wide gap hook, you wanna slide that peg down to where it touches the weight. There's no need to go super hard to like squish that thing in there. The peg should be strong enough. Anything up to an ounce, sometimes over an ounce, if you're fishing heavy, heavy vegetation, you need two pegs on there to really keep that weight up close to the soft plastic. But just like that, again, take it, slide it down and you have yourself a pegged Texas rig. So now I'm gonna show y'all a few different catches in different scenarios of cover. So light cover, open water Texas rig stuff with either weightless or no pegged weight. And then I'm gonna show you a few heavy cover situations, both uh, both you know wood and bushes and aquatic vegetation. That way you guys can kind of get an idea on your body of water if you should or should not be pegging your weights. Let's get on the water. You're gonna get stuck plenty of times. Oh, here's a fish. See him? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we got him. That's a nice one. I got him. Nope. Yes. Haha. <laughs> Look at how pretty this guy is. Beautiful. Look at the spots on that guy. Very pretty. I knew it. I knew that was one. Ah, I think he's big. I think he's big. He was playing with it for a while. I knew it stinking was. Let's go. Oh, gosh. Fail of a boat flip right there. Holy cow. My gosh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Got him, got him. Digging, 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 digging. Holy cow, holy cow. Stay out of that tree. Stay out of that tree. Stay out of that tree and that tree as well. Stay out of all the trees, please. Stay out of all the trees, please. And bring it around. We're gonna use the net because you are big and my line I think was frayed. Let's stink in, go baby. That right there, boys and girls. What I'm talking about. Biggin, biggin, biggin. 
No. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. That right there is the benefit of the bigger rod. Stinking winch this guy out of the, the thickest stuff. I just said, you probably heard me on my microphone. If I get a bite, I'm in trouble. I'm not in trouble. I'm, uh, I'm in love. Goodness gracious. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Yes! <sighs> and that's what you do right there. I literally flipped, you guys see that? In that hole right there. Let us sink all the way to the bottom. And uh, he ate it. Hope. I knew it. I knew there's one in there. Little guy. <laughs> perfect. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, friend. There's one. Yes. Get in here. Get in here. Yeah. Here we go. I knew there'd be more in there. Not going to help my limit for today, but I'll take it. Well, that's gonna be the video, everybody. If you wanna see a very similar video that I made just before this one, talking about whether or not you should be using a weight on your Texas rig, forget about peg or no peg. Should you have a weight on there at all or should it be completely weightless? I will leave that video linked up here in this corner. It has some awesome instruction that I think you guys can definitely learn and improve in your skills from. My name's Tyler and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.